Hello and welcome to the streets of COP29 here in Baku, Azerbaijan. And today's theme focuses on urbanization, transportation and tourism. These three have deep implications for climate change, including land conversion and burning of fossils and high levels of consumption. And today we will be speaking with people on the streets of COP29 to know their views. Let's go. The theme for today is very, very critical to tackling global warming, urbanization, transportation, and tourism. The three are so connected. And we're having a lot of this urbanization in the world today. And principally, this, this involves land conversion. You have, in places like Nigeria, we have a lot of reclamation, reclamation in quotes of land from the sea, uh, which compounds the problem of resilience to flooding and other climate-related issues. And then, you know, land conversion itself is problematic, especially when it's, we talk about urbanization because we end up bringing concrete into a lot of places and that, that itself creates problems of um, flooding problems, as well as issues of carbon and greenhouse gases being released to the atmosphere. And then, on the other hand, transportation is major. We see having a lot of private vehicles clogging our streets, dumping tons of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. We're having less and less. In some countries, we have very little mass transit, which should be the major way to tackle global warming by having less polluting vehicles on the streets. Transportation also includes movement of ship in the ocean. It includes air travel. So it's a major, major contributor to global warming and needs to be handled carefully. And that is why it's important for this discussion. The tourism, of course, cuts across all this. Urbanization influences tourism. Transportation is the, is the mode of moving more tourists around the world. So. It is a very apt discussion today, looking at urbanization, looking at transportation, and looking at tourism. They all play a very big role in the problems that we have, the problem of climate change. They can also play a major role in tackling global warming. It's a topic that is not really spoken about when it comes to climate change crisis, but I think it is very crucial because, for instance, in Ghana, the northern sector has a lot of challenges. We have um, food security issues because of droughts, and so majority of them are moving from, the, from their homes, leaving families behind, and then coming to um, the southern sector. The southern sector also has a problem of sea um, 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 rice people are losing their habitats. And when, when you come to tourism, the southern belt, like the seas where people go to enjoy themselves um, during holidays, the beaches, are now littered, practically littered with filth. And this is, uh, Accra is a place where a lot of um, tourist people come to enjoy themselves. It's the first um, point of call when they visit Ghana, but because of the litter, uh, at the sea it is hindering tourism to the beaches and then when we come to transportation I'm happy because um, people are now interested in electric vehicles the just one group of companies is now looking at how we can switch from ICE internally combustible engines to electric vehicles because of the fumes Accra for instance has a lot of um, um, pollutants in the atmosphere you can actually see see the, the consequence when you compare the, the capital city to the um, um, other regions. You can see the fumes, you can, see, you can smell, it's causing a lot of health implications. And so the switch from internally combustible engines to EV is something that I think we should all be interested in and then look out for. I live currently in Berlin, in Germany, which has one of the most developed uh, public transportations where there is a big push for electric cars and where also combustion cars are expected to be out of the cities by 2035. 
So then when we see the realities in other countries, in Asia, in Latin America or Africa, we see that the reality is very different, where it's very difficult to, to make this change because it requires also an important infrastructure. It, it requires also the people to have the financial resources to make this change from combustion engines to electric cars. Uh, also like the public transportation to be electrified, where in many of these, these countries normally is with combustion engines. So it's, it's, a, it's a progress that is happening, that we are expecting that the carbon markets could help to finance the change. However, it needs an important amount of uh, green finances to arrive to these countries, again in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, for really make this change. Uh, to start progress in that regard and to make it more efficient. We actually released a publication where we have uh, shown the kind of impact of mass and elite tourism on the forest and the forest communities in Eastern Africa, you know. And so uh, how, in, how in Kenya and Tanzania the tourism is not only kind of results in eviction of the communities from their homeland and territories, but also how it is directly linked to the so-called big conservation NGO strategy and further can be linked to the aviation industry, as you say, transport. And then so together, it's not only like having about 8% of emission, uh, av aviation transport is about 8% of uh, emission. And so when you have tourism in the forest areas and for that you are mobilizing funding, the big NGOs, the, the conservation NGOs mobilize fund and so they have to evict the people from the uh, areas, secure it as protected areas, destruction of la livelihood, impact on their culture, spirituality, you know, and then they don't have any stake in, in that framework of tourism. We all know um, that these have great impact to um, the climate that we are talking about. I mean, for instance, um, tourism um, contributes about um, a tenth of uh, greenhouse gas emission to the global emission that um, it's, it's out there and you, you see that it's a very serious um, contributor to uh, climate change, is a contributor to the cl climate crisis that um, we are in. Um, transportation also, um, also has um, a quarter you know, and it's also uh, known that um, about 95% of the world's transportation still runs on fossil. So, um, what we are saying is that these systems need to be depetrolized. These systems need to um, move on and leave the fossil uh, in the ground. We want to say that we need real actions. We want to see actions and not just commitments and not just pledges. We want to see the actions play out. We want to see the polluters kicked out of the cop space. We want to see the people's um, voices matter. We want to hear the people's voices loud and clear again in the cop. We have heard the views from people on the streets of COP29 on the views of transportation, urbanization and tourism as it affects the climate change. We do hope that you have learned a thing or two from the people here on the streets of COP29. Until we come again your way, I am Kome Odomo for Home FTV.